nice. Uh, it was nice to meet you today. Likewise, thank you. So we were having this interesting discussion about Bitcoin miners and uh, you know the Bitcoin treasury and how they are actually evolving from Bitcoin mining to AI and becoming a really like powerhouse, energy powerhouse that what miners are becoming right now. And uh, how Bitcoin as an asset they have on the balance sheet should also be productive. And Absolutely. I thought that was a, a very interesting conversation and uh, you know you have got great insights. So you know if you could share you know your thinking behind it, uh, what you think uh, actually miners should think uh, that would be great. Thank you, Sofania. So, yeah, absolutely. Uh, we're here at Bitcoin Amsterdam, and I've been hearing a lot about Bitcoin for corporations. Bitcoin for corporations applies for miners because they have to use their tools, their balance sheet productively. And certainly as we look ahead, they're going to have challenges operationally. So let's start first on operations, and then we move on to the treasury. On the operations side, miners have had very good profitability for a very long time. But now, specifically after the last having, the Bitcoin reward has been cut again. The mining uh, associated fees related to transactions have started to increase, but still, going forward, uh, being a Bitcoin mining CFO, you need to look ahead, not over the next having cycle, but the next couple of having cycles. And right now, Bitcoin miners in a good position, the pivot of the position of strength is to start considering a business model evolution. What do I mean by that? The Bitcoin mining will continue to be challenging, but there are certain things that Bitcoin miners can do to start and continue to be profitable. They can vertically integrate, but they can go horizontal. Vertically integrate would mean control their main cost base. Power. There are a number of opportunities to use new technologies, but also be acquisitive and continue to integrate to buy those power plants. Horizontally, we could look at owning HPC or other type of compute that will have long-term visibility on cash flow. Granted, it's a lower cost of capital, but still, it's going to be enabled to have a more resilient business model and continue to invest in their corporations as well as have the Bitcoin treasury. So moving on to the Bitcoin treasury. Bitcoin is certainly digital scarcity. Digital scarcity is very, very valuable. And we've seen it with, like with Marathon, right? But Theo has embarked now in emulating Michael Saylor in the Bitcoin for Corporation. Great. But we need to start thinking also next. What's next? What's stage two of Bitcoin for Corporation? Stage two for Bitcoin for Corporations is using Bitcoin as a productive asset. And there, today, there's no well-established plan. But I would argue that it has to be moved forward. Because Bitcoin have a lot of potential, but we need to start generating a return from it. And there are opportunities to think creatively through financing structures to incorporate it in other adjacent businesses. Think about financial services, think about insurance, but completely unrelated. It could be a real estate business. But there are opportunities to think about Bitcoin as a collateral and one that can power other businesses alongside a Bitcoin miner that is looking to diversify and make a more resilient business model. So the main thing right now for me is, as we're talking about a discussion is, encourage people to think about Bitcoin beyond just mining, which is very profitable, vertically, horizontally integrate, and also use the Bitcoin treasury for a position of strength right now to start diversifying further. I kind of want to go through the strength of Bitcoin miners, but also the challenges they are having, as uh, you know, you said before, that in general, the mining business is becoming more difficult because, you know, the earnings. And also because, uh, you know, most of these miners, uh, they are public listed companies and you can issue until a certain amount of, uh, you know, new shares that, that, uh, before you dilute your shell order too much. And that's mm -hmm. not right because all right. the point of being a public listed company is actually to create value for your shareholders. So I think uh, um, miners and in general companies, uh, especially public listed, they should think of, you know, creative ways to kind of manage, manage maximize the assets that they have got and uh, you know not keep going back to the market because then there is another aspect that comes in uh, you know in the mix that is about where those money comes from and Absolutely. the majority obviously comes from institution they still look at bitcoin and digital assets in uh, um, you know with skeptical eyes and you know they are not definitely in the space right now because there is regulation and different other kind of aspects they are still very important and uncertain yeah, no, it's, I think access to capital markets and low cost of capital is a key ingredient. And I think going back to what we were talking earlier, MicroStrategy has been the most successful at it. And it's time now for the miners to start emulating it. Marathon has done it, but they need to go beyond. And by that is some of the strength is just being able to 
use a Bitcoin treasury strategy, issue share, invest in Bitcoin, but at the same time, use some of that low cost of capital to start diversifying their business. That's very, very important to embrace it today, not wait another cycle because it's going to become more difficult. The other strength that they have beyond the public currency they can issue is they have existing operations which generate cash flow. To run a successful long-term business, you need to have enough cash flow to support the overall business and the trajectory. And again, it's very important to think about now to position to the next and support the transition to HPC, to power integration by leveraging what is in the ground that will produce cash flow and profitability. Obviously, power uh, and energy, they are super important right now. They are, you know, the fuel of uh, our economy and you know that's where we kind of build upon and and i think uh, one of the, the key things the miners are trying to do is with ai data center operation is to create that kind of like a resilient infrastructure for the ai revolution but also for all the tech revolution Absolutely. and that comes with lots of challenges as well no look the i forgot to mention the strength but having the infrastructure the power infrastructure the connectivity and certainly the ability to move into other business like AI or other types of HPC compute is certainly a big opportunity for them to leverage what they have, right? Even it could be co-location, it could be the existing site and just adding additional compute capacity around it. We've seen a lot of it. We're even backtracking where long-term the plan is HPC, but so long as they're building their tier one, tier two, tier three data center, they're, used, they're starting with Bitcoin mining. So it's almost like resiliency, but upscaling through initially Bitcoin mining. The challenges, <laughs> well, there's a lot of challenges. So vertical integration, uh, most miners today are consumers of power. Yeah. So they sign a power purchase agreement or buy power in the open market. So they're consumers, they're not producers. If you want to start putting in the producer's shoe, there's a number of operational elements that need to be managed, addressed, and honestly, it's a big, big gap. But that gap can be uh, filled with the right management team and potentially acquiring assets that are already in operation. Right? It's a very different model to do a development of a power asset than it is to buy a power plant and start benefiting from that vertical integration. On the HPC side, a lot of miners have focused on profitability, but not necessarily stability of their mining. By that I mean some of the uptimes in a lot of those Bitcoin mining businesses is not anywhere close to 99%. And that's because they don't have the standards of an HPC. Uh, compute that require them by the, the standards that they sign to co-locate and produce a compute that is 99.99% of the time. Yeah. So that requires backups for electricity, the right uh, transmission lines for, uh, for electricity for the existing power networks. It also requires a different internet connectivity, different standards for management of the operations that, again, is a gap that can be filled, but I would encourage miners to think about filling the gap with existing teams and management teams that have done it but scale into it through their strengths, like a public currency, their ability to take advantage of the opportunity to sell more shares and, and buy Bitcoin and continue to fund their operations. So you're right, there's, there are challenges. Those challenges are meaningful. So the, those challenges can be done uh, by using some of their strengths to overcome them. What are the challenges for institution to get involved in the space? <laughs> so, we are an asset manager, so our clients are institutions, and we're in the front line hearing the feedback, both positive and also negative. Uh, on the positive side, it's very clear that Bitcoin has achieved a global asset status. That means it has a track record, is well understood, and by most effects, it's a well-known commodity. So it, it can be part of a global asset allocation. Most investors though have not introduced it in their global asset allocation model. That is coming. There's a number of investment consultants that have started to put in their quarterly reports. There's a number of pension funds, insurance companies, so roughly that they own Bitcoin, but it's still a small amount. But as soon as it becomes more of a standard global asset allocation that they start from, it's going to be part of their benchmark, part of their starting point. We're getting there, but not yet. But it certainly has the qualities to be there. I think that transition is going to happen within the next, probably the cycle. The challenges, it is still relatively new. It's 16 yeah. years and there is a big educational gap. I have been most successful trying to think about it as a commodity than it has been through a new technology because that's even more complex. But still, the educational gap exists. If you think about the key stakeholders for large institutions, we're talking about 
not millennials. Yeah. They're definitely baby boomers or or older. Yeah. And those people have gone through basically not having a cell phone to now living their lives on their iPhone. So they are not ready to take a very, it's a very big step in Bitcoin where they have to reassess a number of their fundamental factors, such as what is money? What is the cost of capital? And unfortunately, it's just the way it is for now, that it has been the de facto way of running the world fiat standard. But that is, there are signs that it will change. Inflation is here to stay. Monetary debasement is likely increasing. So the numbers will start to tell a story that will start to change minds. But we do need a generational shift, yeah. unfortunately, to have broad adoption and a broad reshift. And this has happened before. If you think about capital markets, capital markets started with being a fiduciary just investing in bonds. Actually, it was codified.